Welcome back to my Roblox GUI tutorial series. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about appearance modifiers. Now, what do I mean by appearance modifiers? So basically, Roblox has these objects inside of Roblox Studio that allows us to enhance the customization of how our GUI objects look inside of the game. So things like adding a gradient effect to the background of a certain text label or a frame, the same thing with applying a stroke to a certain text or like a border. We can even set rounded corners and we can do all sorts of things. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing you a few of these objects that we can use to enhance our GUI elements. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the right side in starter GUI, hit the plus sign and insert a screen GUI. Uh, and for this demonstration, I'm going to insert a text label inside of the screen GUI. I'm going to move this to the center, scale this up just a little bit and make sure that it aligns perfectly just like this. Okay, so the first object that I'm going to show you is a pretty easy one, and this one is called UI Corner. So if I insert a UI Corner in this text label by searching up UI Corner, then what it's going to do is it's going to make the edges of this text label rounded, hence the name UI Corner. And we can change a certain property here called Corner Radius, which basically tells us how rounded do we want the edges to be. So I'm going to reset offset to be zero and I'm going to change the scale to something like 0.2. So as you can see, the corners are now more noticeable when it comes to how round it is. And I believe the highest scale we can go is 0.5, which looks something like this. Because if you were to go anything past that, like 0.6, then nothing is going to be different about it. But this is basically how we add rounded corners to a GUI object. And the next thing I'm going to show you is called a UI stroke. So I'm going to hit the plus sign on the text label, insert a UI stroke, just like this. Now, the thing about this is, as you can see, the stroke is being applied to the text label. But what if instead we wanted to apply the stroke to the border itself? What we can do is change this property called apply stroke mode. Uh, instead of it being contextual, we're just going to drop down here. There's uh, another option here called border. So if we click on this, then what it's going to do is instead of adding a stroke to the text, it's going to add a stroke to the border. We can make this more visible by changing the thickness to let's say five. And there's also this other property called line joint mode, which basically tells us how do we want the rounded corners to look. And by default, it's round. So we can change it to something like bevel, which looks like this. We can change it to, I think this is a uh, mitter, if that's how you pronounce it correctly, that looks like this. But for now, we're just going to set it to round. And that's basically what UI stroke is. What we can also do is add padding to our uh, text as well. So if we hit the plus sign and insert a UI padding just like this, then the purpose behind this object is, let's say we wanted to leave some space up here so that we can fit other elements up here without having our text label in the way, then we can add a padding object. But to clear any confusion, I'm just going to show you how we can use this. So down here, we have four options here with behavior. So we can have padding on every side of this GUI object. Um, and for each one, there's a scale and an offset. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be changing the scale. So let's say we wanted to change padding top to a certain scale. Let's say we want this to be 0.2. Then what it's going to do is with this text label, it's going to pad the text downward. So it's going to leave a little bit of space up here, which is going to push the text label downward just like this. And if we change it to 0.5, then it's going to uh, apply even more padding to push this even further down. And we can do the same thing with padding left. So if we change this to, let's say 0.5 as well, then what it's going to do is add extra padding over here to the left so that it pushes the text label to the right like this. And that is what you want to use padding for. It's if you want to add a little bit of space in between a certain direction and where the GUI element is. Because let's say uh, one of the elements is too far on the edge and we want to push it a little bit so that it's a little more centered or it's like not touching the edge. That's just an example, but this is basically what a UI padding object is. And now what I want to show you is how you can apply a gradient effect to a GUI element. So what we're going to do is uh, on our text label, we're going to hit the plus sign and we're going to insert a UI gradient that looks like this. 
Now, the way that this works is we have this property called color. And if we click on this and press the three dots over here, then what it's going to do is it's going to pull up a time sequence timeline that looks something like this, where we have a keyframe at the beginning here and a keyframe at the end here. And what we can do is select one of these keyframes and click on color, and we can change this color to whatever we want, let's say red. And what it's going to do is this timeline is going to match the color of this GUI element that it's placed under. And we can do the same thing at the end here. We can select it and we can change the color of this to, let's say, yellow. And it's going to match it to look like what it looks like over here on the timeline. We can even add more keyframes to this just by clicking anywhere in the timeline here and just selecting it. So now we have another keyframe on time 0.478. But if we want to be specific, we can change this to 0.5. So it's right in the middle in between. We can change this color to let's say something different, like a darker orange, just like this. And now we have a gradient that looks something like this. And we could just close this. And that is basically how we add gradients to our GUI elements. We can also do things like changing the offset of the gradient as well, so that it starts at a different position in the timeline. So that's something we can do to change that as well. We can even change the rotation of it so that it can be rotated in a certain way. We can even change the transparency of it as well if we don't want to fully see the gradient. And that is basically what we do with UI gradients. So those are some objects that we can use to change the appearance of a GUI element. And I hope you found this to be really helpful. So for today's learning objective, I want you to recreate this health bar GUI down here. I want you to focus on the appearance side of this health bar using the objects that I taught you in this episode with things like the rounded corners, the text stroke, the gradient, and all of those sorts of things. But as an added challenge, I want you to make this health bar functional as well using scripting. So if I were to, let's say, update my health to 80, then what this health bar is going to do is it's going to update the text and also the health bar itself to reflect on how much health I currently have. But the important thing here is being able to use appearance modifiers to make this health bar look nice. You don't have to focus on the scripting part. That's just an added challenge if you want to do that. But that is basically your learning objective for this episode. But what I'm going to do is stop and I'm going to give you a little bit of time to attempt making this health bar GUI before I show you the script. So I'm going to assume that you spent a little bit of time trying this out for yourself. So what I'm going to do now is open up the health bar GUI and I'm going to show you the local script inside of here to basically show that this is the script used to update the health bar that reflects on the player's current health. So we have a function here that updates the, the health text to the current humanoid's health, and we divide that by the humanoid's max health, and we use tween service to make the bar move very smoothly. We do this initially when the player loads into the game, and we also use this get property changed signal function to update the health bar every single time the health changes. So that is basically what the script does. And you might need to change it a little bit depending on how you make your health bar GUI. But yeah, that is basically how you create a health bar inside of Roblox Studio. Before we end the video, I want to give a shout out to my Patreon members for their continued support to help me continue making these Roblox scripting tutorials for you guys. And if you want to get access to my scripts, get early access to upcoming videos, and other benefits like that, then I will leave a link to my Patreon page in the description for you to check out. I appreciate your support very much. So that is basically going to be it for this episode on appearance modifiers. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one. Take care.